Aloha, my kako. For all you budding scientists out there, I'd like to introduce a concept that will be important as you explore our natural world. Did you know that all living organisms are sorted into different categories? Scientists all over the world use the same sorting system to classify plants and animals into categories that contain organisms with similar characteristics. We call this concept an organism's taxonomic rank. There are seven taxonomic ranks that are the primary way that scientists describe plants and animals, and these ranks are kingdom, phylum, class, order, family, genus, and finally, species. Let's do an example. Let's explore how this classification system works. As an example that we'll use first, let's look at how our species, human beings, are classified within this system. First, kingdom. We are animals. Phylum. We are chordata. We are chordates. Primarily, we have a backbone. We're in the class mammalia. We are mammals. We are in the order primates, which includes all the monkeys, the great apes, and humans. We're in the family hominidae, which only includes the great apes and humans. And finally, our genus species is Homo sapien. Intelligent human is really what that means. I can describe every animal on Earth with this classification system. So let's look at another example, one within our local Hawaiian waters. And I'll do the, the common lobe coral. It's the kingdom of animals again. It's the phylum Cnidaria. It's the class Anthozoa. It's the order Scleractinia. It's the family Perididae. And it's the genus and species Parides lobata. For now, let's ignore all the ranks except one. And that rank we're going to discuss is phylum. For the purpose of this and some other videos I'm going to be make, I'll, making, I'll talk about the phyla that describe invertebrates, animals without backbones. And I won't be talking about any of the phyla that describe animals with backbones. So no fish, no mammals, no birds. You might ask why I'll talk only about invertebrates. Because in Hawaii, some of our niftiest critters on our reefs and in our nearshore waters are invertebrates. And I have a personal special passion for all things invertebrate. Here are the six phyla that I'll introduce. Cnidarians, mollusks, arthropods, annelids, echinoderms, and finally, peripherans. I'll have a separate video for each of these phylum, but this video I'll introduce you to cnidarians. So first let's talk about what a funny name it has. The word cnidarians is pronounced as if the letter C was not there, silent. When you say the word, pretend there is no C at the beginning of the word. So cnidarian. What animals do we find in the phylum cnidaria? All of our corals are cnidarians, as are box jellyfish anemones and the Portuguese man of war. All cnidarians have a stomach and a mouth. They can be solitary or colonial. And importantly, all cnidarians have stinging cells called nematocysts. Cnidarian literally means stinging creature. Now, most people in Hawaii know about the stinging cells in the box jellyfish or the Portuguese man of war. Major ouch. But all the members of this phylum, including corals and anemones, also have stinging cells. But they don't have enough power to penetrate human skin, which is very lucky for us. Of course, visually, the members of this phylum we most think about when we're swimming or snorkeling in a place like Hanama Bay or Kaneohe Bay are the corals, which will be the subject of many of my videos. The internet has thousands of articles about the animals in the phylum Cnidaria. Do a simple Google search and you can see what's available. 
There are also many excellent books in Hawaii's libraries discussing in detail all things about Hawaii's Cnidarians. An excellent book is actually called Hawaii's Sea Creature. This book covers all the ocean invertebrates I'll discuss in my videos. I've barely touched on what can be learned about the Cnidarians that live in our Hawaiian waters. The rest of the research is up to you at this point. Mahalo mai kakou, e kapa'a me ka aloha, i ka aina.